Hi, and welcome to Dave Barlow Guitar. And in this video, I've been asked to build an attenuator. Uh, if you haven't seen a video I did uh, uh, about a month ago, or a few weeks back, I can't remember now, uh, I showed you uh, uh, a kind of DIY uh, attenuator that I made, but I didn't show you how to make it. So, in my little workshop office thing, where I hide away every day, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna make you one. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. So uh, stay tuned. Got my little list here, right? Got that. Uh, we will need um, a stomp box enclosure. That's the first thing we're going to need. One of these, as you can see. Well, let me tell you what stomp box enclosure is. I got this off of uh, eBay. Um, it is a 1590 BB uh, stomp box. Uh, they call it a large one. That's kind of large one. I get largest one I could get. Um, I wanted to get one slightly larger just to allow for heat dissipation, but this will do for what I want it for. Obviously, I'll put a list um, in the uh, at the bottom of the video, so don't worry about that. But uh, so yeah, so as you can see uh, with this stomp box enclosure, I've already pre-drilled some holes uh, to allow for cooling. I'd also pre-drilled the hole at the top. Now, I was going to say show you where, where and how to measure these holes out, but everybody's going to probably want to have a slightly different design. So, uh, you know, you drill the hole where you want to, you know. Uh, obviously, um, you've got to make, make sure you've got plenty of room for the next thing that you require, which is an L-pad attenuator. This one is, uh, this one will take up to 100 watts, and it's 8 ohms. Um, if you want a 16 ohm one, good luck to you, because uh, I've been looking for them everywhere and I can't find them in the UK. I in the US, I think you can get them a lot easier, but for some reason I can't get hold of them here uh, that easy. But uh, but anyway, um, I'm generally uh, using 8 ohms mostly with my gear, so that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna build. Um, so that's called an L-pad attenuator. The next thing we need is uh, a jack uh, socket. It's one of those. Nothing special, just an ordinary jack socket, mono. One of those. What else do we need? Solder. We need some solder. Got some here. And we need a soldering iron. Got one of those. That's it. I think that's that's all we need. Um, obviously, the attenuator comes with its own knob. Uh, so you can use that if you want to. Or you can use a different one. You can use a guitar knob or whatever you like. Whatever you can fit on it. Anything goes, right? So, let's crack on with it. Uh, and I'll show you what... Oh, so I missed something. Hang on. You need some wire. This is uh, this is speaker, speaker wire, speaker cable. Um, I don't know what gauge it is. I've had it for ages. I bought it from our hardware store before they went bust. Maplins, if anybody's heard of it. I bought loads of it. But um, it's just normal speaker wire. Uh, I use it quite a lot for rewire speakers here. But um, that's the stuff that you'd find in a 4x12 cab or, or on the back of your combo. That's what they use, this kind of speaker wire, as a general rule. So that's what I'm using for hook it to hook everything up. Preparation. First things first, um, I want to remove the cover of this L-pad. Um, because uh, by doing so, I'm kind of aiding the, aiding it to, cool, to keep cool. Um, the name of the game is to keep these cool. You want it running cool. Um, so I'll just get that done, get that off. Just screwdriver, there's some four four tangs. Just bend the tangs over. Off it comes. Discard that, you don't need that, you just need that. This is the L-pad. We need to decide um, um, on where this L-pad is going. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you the reason why. Um, the input and output is here, so I want it so I can. The input and output comes out the back, out the back, so if I look that way. And I want it. I want to be able to turn it on, turn it off, or bring up the volume by going this way, that that direction, and then backing off the volume that direction. Input output there. So in order to do that, I have to have the L-pad in my box that way around. 
Okie dokie, not, not that way round, this way round. So decide on that. I mean, you can have it any way round you like, it doesn't matter. But uh, I prefer it to be that way around in this case. Okay? Cool. Uh, so I'm going to roughly measure my wire from about from here. I'm going to go around there. It's going to have to hit, go to that one. Uh, it's going to have to go to that one as well. So I'm going to need about that length of wire. About that length of wire. That's it. So I'm just going to strip that wire. Get everything in place and you can see the next step. As you can see, um, <coughs> I've mounted it on the top. Um, uh, <laughs> I mount it on the top because it's just easier to work with um, and I can just solder my wires onto here and then solder the, the other side of the wires onto the um, onto the jack sockets <coughs> don't worry I'll, I'll show you which wires to, wet, to, to, to wire to don't worry about that I'm going to go ahead and uh, tin all my wires up um, get all the tinning done uh, and then I'll show you where how to wire it up correctly um, uh, that way you won't go wrong but uh, yeah let me tin all this up so I'm going to tin I'm going to tin all the connections all the wires uh, it makes for a good solder joint I'm even going to tin these as well because it just makes for a good solder joint that you know it's good practice get it right I got two red wires and two black wires. Well, it's a black wire with a red stripe on it, but it's mainly black. So two red, two black. I'm going to wire one red here and one red to this terminal. So one red wire to this terminal, one red wire to that terminal. I'm going to need a little bit more solder on that. Better. Okay, now. <coughs> red wire, red wire. Two black wires. Now these two black wires, put them together. Solder both of the wires. Let's get them both in that terminal. Okay, red, red, both blacks. Oh, 
Okay, so, uh, so let's do the input side first. So these two, this black wire here, one of these black wires, which is coming from here, one of the two black wires, you need to solder to the ground on here, which is this one. Let me just solder that in. As ever, it's awkward in front of the camera. Sold it up, trim it. Is that soldered in? Nice and neat solder. Okay, and the same. So you get your output, which is this one here, and you solder that also to the ground, uh, which we'll do now. Might need some more solder on this. Yeah. So that is also soldered. Let's give it a quick trim. So that is soldered as well. So that's the, that's that part soldered so um, the other thing to do now is um, what we need to do is solder the other two red ones on now you might think uh, that this one goes here let's, let's see if you can see this this one goes here and this one goes here no, forget all that right so I do a step by step the middle terminal okay goes to the output So the middle terminal, this one here, goes to the output of this jack, which is which is the output jack. Okay, um, this terminal gets soldered to that that terminal. Don't worry, there'll be a wiring diagram because it, it's kind of confusing when you when you see it on the camera. I'm looking at it; it's all backwards, so uh, it's kind of weird. So this is the output that. Sorry, this is the output, this is the input. I'll keep them separate. So the middle terminal goes to the output hot. So I'll do that. Now this one. So just double check some of my solder and make sure I'm happy with it. Um, so I'm going to try and show you this, how this works. So here's the L pad. Um, Here's the three terminals. So we take this terminal here. You've got the two black wires, and they're going to the, um, the ground connection on the input, input and the output jack. These two jacks here. Okay, two ground connections. Then you've got this red wire from the outermost red wire of this terminal here, going to the hot on the input jack, which is the left side here. And then the middle terminal red wire goes to the hot on the right hand side which is the output okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it in the box and uh, so you probably be able to see it a lot better than you see it taking shape uh, when it's all in the box
Okay, so let's get this right. The wire, so you've got terminal here, this terminal here. It's got a black wire on this terminal here. It's got a red wire on this terminal here. That will be the input. So let's put that in. That's going to be our input. Now, this one, that is our output. So, There's our input, there's our output, there's our dial. Let's put it together properly. Okay, so it's all in. So amplifier in here, speaker out here. Volume. Let's test it out. So oh, here we have, this is uh, a 50 watt uh, kind of Marshall SK head. And um, as you can see, um, I'm using the treble channel and it's on, I don't know, six or seven. Uh, uh, trebles, everything else more or less 12 o'clock apart from the presence. And basically, um, this is with the uh, attenuator it, it wound all the way to the left, so as quiet as absolutely possible. Maybe you can hear it, maybe you can't. Obviously at the lower levels, um, you know, the, the sound is a, is a little bit, uh, is a little bit muffly, but as, as, you as you open it up and you get around to three quarters to halfway, you get into kind of near on a gig volume, um, uh, but you're pushing your amp as well at the same time, so this attenuator is doing a great job. Um, and I think an attenuator like this, if you use it in this way, it's gonna it's gonna be fine. It's not gonna get too hot. Obviously, if you put if you if you've got that back right off and you're pushing your amp and you're just you're just going for it for hours, that's gonna get quite hot. Um, I haven't tested it for hours and hours. One of these L pads. This is a 50 watt head, but 100 watt L pad, so it should it should be fine. But um, but you can see it's it's great if you're gonna if you got to use these as a balance when you're using attenuators uh, uh, and amps. Obviously, I've done a lot, quite, covered quite a lot on this in a previous video, but um, there is no way on this earth that I'll be able to play this amp at that volume on 7 without this. It would be impossible. Um, it would be just impossible. I'll turn it down a bit because neighbours. <laughs> There you have it. Hey, uh, time for some finishing touches, uh, I suppose. Um, feet. So let's put some feet on it. I don't put the feet over the uh, screws. Uh, I hate it when manufacturers do that. Put feet over screws. What a silly idea that is. Uh, let's put four little feet on it.
cool. Now it's got rubber feet. Won't slide like won't slide around. Cool. Okay, so we are all done. This is the attenuator. Obviously, you can dress it up a bit. You can paint it. You can do whatever you want with it. I just left mine, you know, uh, as it is. It's you know, it's just uh, a tool for me. Um, that's how you make your own attenuator. I've I clearly marked in and out um, here. This is in. This is out. Clearly marked that in is from your amplifier output. So your speaker output for your amplifier goes in there, and then the out goes to your speaker. So this goes to the speaker. This comes from the amplifier. So that's how that works. I just want to make sure you get it. Don't get it. Don't get it the other way around. If you plug it in the wrong way around, you'll damage this. Um, yeah, you don't want to do that or your hard work. So that is an attenuator, L pad attenuator. They work great, especially you know when you kind of like it. Gig, you know, rehearsal volumes, practice practice volumes is pretty good, but rehearsal volumes is good and gig volumes is even better, and they work great for that. Uh, and even in the studio when you're recording, they're good for that too. So um, yeah, just uh, what are you still watching the video for? Go and make one. Uh, all the details, uh, parts I used to, uh, are below. Um, go and check that out. Uh, please uh, subscribe, put some comments in there, and I'll catch you later.